mind how great is our God and the difference and the change it makes when we praise him and we take our minds off of ourselves and the problems that we have. How many of you know we have a, a, a savior, a creator who loves us? And just like my brother was saying, we can't do life without him. When we do life without him, we get into the messes that we've all been in. And I've been in my own messes and I still get into messes sometimes. But man, when you know Jesus, when you truly get to know God, you get to understand the plan that he has for us and how he works everything out for our good. No matter the situations you've gone through, the situation you may be going through right now, there's a promise in heaven that says he works everything out for our good, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So my name is Johnny Rez. I was born here in Miami. How many Miami people do I have here? A lot of you. I was born to, uh, to Cuban parents. I think it was about a year ago, right, George? I, it must have been about a year ago that we met. I was uh, speaking at, at uh, another meeting, and um, I got to just share my story a little bit. And, you know, God has done miraculous things in my life, and, and he does those things for us to reflect and represent who he is. And it's, uh, it's an amazing thing, just, cause, just like my brother was saying, that the enemy is a master distractor. And all he wants to do is, especially when you're going on the right path, once, Jesus, once you know Jesus as your savior is, how can I keep them from their purpose? How can I keep them from the blessing that I have for them? The more you walk in Jesus, the more you walk according to his word, the more in blessing you walk. Man, about seven, eight years ago, I was, uh, I was just bound by, um, by, by drinking and, and, and prescription drugs. And uh, I had gotten uh, out of college and I just got caught up in a, you know, in a group of people and I was, you know, smoking a, a whole lot of, a whole lot of pot. And then to get off of that, I got into something else. And then to get out of that, I got into something else. And it was like this cycle, right? It's funny because I've known Jesus. I've known God since I was very young. I grew up in the church. So it's like none of us are, none of us are um, exempt, I should say. Even those of us who've grown up with a relationship with God. And um, I'm just so amazed at the moment that I stepped, I, I got down on my knees. I was doing my best to do this thing on my own. I was doing my best to stop this lifestyle that I had started. And I got on my knees in my room and I said, God, you know, I have this desire. I want to go out and I want to go get in trouble. And I can't stop this on my own, but I know that you can. I know that there's a power that only you have. And I got on my knees and I cried and I said, God, please put an end to this. And that night I went out and I took some pills and I drank and little did I know that that would be the last night and the last car accident I would get into. I had already totaled two vehicles, almost killed myself. The first accident that I had, I uh, took this stop sign. I had no idea it was there. I was like 16 or 17. I think I had my learner's permit. I was on the way to a friend's house and we were gonna, we were gonna smoke that night. And, um, and I took a stop sign and I T-boned this car, hit it on the side and there was a person in the back of the car without a seatbelt and she flew out of the window about 20 feet and there i was this young man you know seeing this and and her, her head just cracked open on the on the street and that night my life could have changed for the absolute worst i could have gone to jail that night for killing somebody for manslaughter and it's incredible because if you're here today i believe god's word for you is that he's he's saved you and he's held you back from things that you can't even imagine as hard as it's been, the things that you've gone through, it could have been worse. That night, it could have been worse for me. That was the first accident I have. And the night that I, going back to my story, the night that I went out and um, I went about my way and uh, I ran into this wall. I actually had gotten into an accident, left the scene, speeding away, it was raining, I lost control of the car and I, and I hit this, uh, this cement wall and uh, I told the, the cops this bogus story that someone had cut me off. You know how we can be pretty nifty and resourceful when we want to be. And uh, you know, the cops, the cops were going to let me go and believe my story. My father got there and they said, look, this kid is telling us this story. But, you know, I'm looking at him and we can tell that he's under the influence. But because I'm a father and because I know what it's like to have a son, we're going to let him go. My dad asked another question out of, you know, out of in, in innocence. And he said, you know what, for you trying to meddle with the investigation, we're going to take him in under a DUI. So that night I was put in jail. I, was, I had been on probation for something else that I got in trouble for. And little did I know that my dad meddling with 
the situation was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because I spent a week in jail, was supposed to spend 21 days in jail. Went to see the judge uh, after a week and my lawyer who my family had hired could not do anything to get me out. I was at FIU, I had a full scholarship at FIU because I went to a Christian school all my life and I, was, I did pretty good in school. So I, I, I had a scholarship, had money back even when I bought my books, I was just in a blessed situation. And I was about to lose all that because I was in finals and was just gonna mess everything up. My lawyer had done the best thing he could and there was another lawyer in that line of lawyers that shows up on those days. And he said, look, you know, if he came up to my lawyer and he said, I don't, I don't wanna step on your toes, but I think I can help this kid if, if you let me. And he stood before the judge and he pleaded his cause and he got me out early under his uh, vigilance, if you can say it that way. And they put a, a beeper on my ankle and I was on house arrest for six months. But I didn't spend 21 days in jail and in those six months, God began to create a character in me and began to create a, rela a relationship with him that I really didn't have before that. You know, I loved God. I really, I really had moments in my heart that I was like, man, you know, I'm not doing what I should be. But it took, it took that difficult situation and that difficult circumstance for there to be a, a true sitting in my heart of who God was. And in those six months, I began to, to play guitar and I began to write music. And in the midst of those six months, I said, God, what's your purpose for me in my life? I said, I love music. I've always had this dream of doing something with music. And I said, if that's what you want me to do, just let me know because I'm going to go after it with all my heart. One of the things I want to instill in you guys today is it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter if you think that you are worthy or not. God has a special plan for each of you in this place. Doesn't matter if you've been burned out, doesn't matter if you've been fired a million times, it doesn't matter if you've been divorced, married, divorced two, three times. I wanna or just remind you that if you, if you would ask God, he would reveal to you that, that wonderful plan that he has for you, because he did it with me. And I'm nothing special, I'm no one special. I may be, I may be uh, just so blessed that at an early age I was able to go through the things that I did. But one thing I know about God is that he does not leave any stone unturned. And if you're here tonight, he wants to speak to you. He wants to speak into your heart. I had this verse come to mind as I was kind of preparing what I was going to say. It's a verse in Isaiah that says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. He spoke this verse over Israel after they had just been set free from Pharaoh, from their captivity. And they had walked in the wilderness 40 years. And God was saying, I've delivered you from the wilderness and I've delivered you from the wasteland. How many of you feel like you're in a wilderness? How many of you feel like, man, no matter what I do, things have been so difficult or I do well and I fall back. I believe God wants to give you a word today that he's doing a new thing in you. I believe God wants to start a new chapter in your life. He wants to let you know that he's there. He wants to let you know that, that he hasn't left you. So he's doing a new thing in you. The old has gone, the new has come. I've realized that life, in my life that I, I've had moments where I uh, think back on the past so much, I forget to live in the present, and I forget to look forward to the future. I want to uh, take a quick moment, I'm going to sing another song, and this is one that I wrote. It's called 200%. This might pop if I'm gonna connect it. No way to get around it, huh? Thank you so much, you muted. This song is called 200%.
It seems so high It seems impossible But maybe it's just what I gotta do right now I might be wrong But I feel invincible Nothing's gonna stop this fire I have inside And I won't hold my breath Oh, I'll take it step by step Don't know what comes next But I'll give it my 200% I'm gonna take it to the limit Cause God, if you're in it, I'm gonna win it I'm gonna win it for you I'm gonna take it to the limit Cause God, if you're in it, I'm gonna win it I'm gonna win it for you And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful Can you sing that with me tonight? Just declare that over yourselves. The Word of God says that there is power in death in what we say and what we speak. I just want to, uh, I want to sing that with you. Oh, and you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful You won't fail me And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful, Jesus And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful I'm gonna take it to the limit Cause God, if you're in it, I'm gonna win it I'm gonna win it for you I'm gonna take it to the limit Cause God, if you're in it, I'm gonna win it I'm gonna win it for you once more And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful Yes, they are There's something beautiful Sing it out And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful If you're in this place tonight, God wants to remind you of the beautiful plans that he has for you. I think there's some people in this, in this place that just feel like they're worthless. There are times that I feel like I'm worthless. But God has sent us here today just to remind you of his love for you. He wants to remind you that it doesn't matter what you've done. His son died on a cross for you so that you don't have to work for your, so you don't have to work for your salvation. It's a done deal, it's over. Just like my brother was saying, the enemy is out to get us, but the better news is that he's given us victory over the devil. The, the, the word of God says that he's given us the mind of Christ. That means we have the power when, when the wrong things come into our minds to say, you know what, no. No, that's not, that's not a thought from God. That's not a thought from heaven. That's not a thought from the Holy Spirit. So in this moment, we just take back authority in Jesus' name over the lies of the enemy. We bind and rebuke every demonic spirit, every evil spirit in Jesus' name. And I just proclaim over this group of people that there is no power in hell that can compare to the power of the Holy Spirit. And every plan in heaven shall come to pass as we sing. Oh, and you won't fail me. Your plans for me are beautiful. There's something beautiful And you won't fail me Your plans for me are beautiful There's something beautiful Lord, you're beautiful So beautiful It doesn't matter what I've done It doesn't matter where I've been You are beautiful your plans are beautiful 
The enemy has no hold. The enemy has no power over me. No power over me. No power over me. You hold the key to our heart. You hold the key to our hearts. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. That song is special because I feel, you know, 200%. Sometimes we go after something, but we don't really give it our all. And I believe if you're here tonight, man, it's because you're, you're really, you're giving this thing your all. I don't know how, how long you guys have been sober for. My, my, my story or when, you know, that, that night that I got on my knees, I think it's going to be about, it's going to be about eight years now. And I've gone through, you know, some up, up and downs like we all do on this earth. But man, I've, I've had some amazing, amazing ups, amazing highs. And even in the down, you realize just how faithful God is, right? Um... When I asked God, I said, God, if music is for me, please show me. The next day, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine, and he got a call, and he was like, hey, do you know anybody who plays acoustic guitar by chance? Because we're putting together this band, and we need someone, you know? And that, that in my heart, I knew it. I said, this is God confirming it to me. How many of you know that God speaks to us in different ways? He's an infinite God. We, we have finite minds. That means that he can never run out of ways to speak with us. He can never run out of ways to get to us. Sometimes we box God in, 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 in how, you know, and how he should do things. But the fact of the matter is we have no right. Just like my friend was saying, we're not God. He is God. And he spoke to me that day and he confirmed it for me. And that meant the world to me. It meant everything to me. Because I realized there was, uh, there was really a God in heaven who loves us so much. He loves us so much that he would communicate with us. Not only did he, does he see does he send his one and only son to die for us? But even beyond that, while we were yet still sinners, right? He sent his son to die for us, rose up from the grave. And the fact of the matter is there's people on this earth who don't go through addiction. There's people on this earth who, who never need to be in a group like this, like us. But man, they're not living life until they meet Jesus. And I even find it a blessing to have to struggle through something but just like I believe it was Paul who said, I, I've learned to be content, right? I've learned to be content in everything that I go through. Man, what a blessing it is to be sitting in this room and maybe have struggled through things or be struggling through an addiction, but know Jesus, but know that we have victory in him. The battle has been won. Sometimes we want something and we don't realize it's already been given to us. It says, where, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I believe when we've been worshiping and singing, when we say how great is our God, the spirit of the Lord is in this room. The Spirit of the Lord resides in our heart. That means we're already free. Sometimes we've got to walk things out though, right? Just like I got on my knees and I said, God, set me free. He didn't do it in that moment. I used to think, I used to think the majority of the times it was like you ask God for something and it should be right then and there. That's not the way God works. It's not the way God works. And I think all of you, a lot of you can attest to that, right? Because it's a journey and it's a process. Beauty in the process. There is beauty in the process. I want to talk to you a second. Um, what's your name? Rod. Rodrigo. Um, Rodrigo, have you, uh, have you been divorced? Yes? More than once? Just once. I've been practicing listening to God. I've been practicing listening to him the funny thing about when God speaks is that it sounds a lot like you some people want to hear from God but they don't want to read the Bible and that's where it all starts that's his word that's his gift to us and the way sometimes God's most of the time the way he speaks to us is when you have all these Bible verses stored up when I was six months on house, house arrest and I was worshiping and I was writing music I used to just break down before the Lord and cry I had all this shame and all this guilt and all these problems and I, and I had this outlet you know that we all have maybe you're not a singer maybe you're not a, a, a guitar player but guess what you can lock yourself in a room you can listen to some worship music or not listen to music and set yourself on God set your mind on God word of God set, says set your mind on things above 
not on earthly things. We're surrounded by earthly things. But man, the things of heaven are what matter. The things of heaven are eternal. So Rod, I've... I feel, I feel this word. I'm just taking a step out in faith that there's going to be restoration for that marriage. How far, how long has it been? You're married again? Okay, so that word was completely off. With the new marriage? Okay. But you're still together. Okay. Well, do not take my word as in that the right thing to do is divorce that person. Excuse me. Sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. But what I found with God is that he just wants you to take that step in faith. And I'm, I'm practicing to listen to God. I'm, I'm practicing taking some chances like that. But, um, but man, Rod, I just want to bless you then. And I just uh, I want to you know, declare over your life that, uh, that God would give you wisdom and give her wisdom and give you guys peace together. And uh, that his purpose between you guys um, would be accomplished. Thank you, man. Thank you. That gives me hope. I, <laughs> I was at this event called The Send in uh, Orlando or something. They filled this stadium. I think it was 70,000 people or something, right? Believers, right? Filled this stadium and it was all about uh, evangelism, right? Sending, do, creating this send and this call for us to reach the lost. There's this guy named Sean Bowles, an amazing prophetic speaker. This guy shows up. He's been practicing listening to God for a while. This guy shows up before a meeting. And God has spoken to him and give him, gives him the name of people and gives them details of their lives and, and life and gives them prophetic words. And that, that has just motivated me. It's inspired me. When I was a young boy with my brother, we used to go to the mall with my grandma. And she would sit us down in un banquito and a bench, you know, over here. And we would sit and she would walk up to people. And, um, and we would look at them and, and right away they would just start crying and tearing up. And it was because God, the Holy Spirit, was giving her a word or insight into their life and she would bring them to know Jesus. God is so in love with us that he will reach us any way that he can. And he would reach those people through my grandma. And anyways, I, I'm, I'm working on carrying that torch and carrying that anointing. Rod, thank you. Maybe the word was that there's going to be restoration in your marriage that you're in now. Maybe that's what that is. You're taking the steps now to avoid that. Father, we thank you for Rod's life. And we just come together right now in agreement. Father, and I, and I just declare, Lord, that chance that I took, that actually what it means is, Father, that, you, that you're breathing life into Rod's marriage right now. Thank you for the heart that he has, Lord. You're meeting him right there. You want Rod to know how much you love him. And your word for him is that you love his marriage more than he does. You love his marriage more than he does. And he wants to see you through it, Rod. So we just declare righteousness over Rod. Break away, the, break away the things, the chip away the things, Father, that are damaging both from him and both from his wife. And in Jesus' name, we just declare life over Rod and over his marriage, God. That you're going you're gonna to do things that he could never imagine would be done because of how much you love Rod and how much you love his wife. In Jesus' name, I pray. So I, I, I'll continue a little bit with my story and, and I don't want to hold you guys up too much more. But um, but yeah, I, uh, I had that confirmation about my calling, about music, about playing guitar and, and writing music. I had this dream since I was young to be a musician. It's funny because uh, when I was three years old, I um, I was in school in K three or something, and I heard and I. You know, my, and I, I got to talk about my grandma again because she uh, was very special. She, uh, she told me that when God speaks to you, you never forget it. How many of you remember a lot of things from your childhood? I don't. You guys remember something like, you know, hardly anything really. Some people, yeah, some people know. But um, when I was three years old and I was in, in, you know, in school, 
I remember this voice inside of my heart. It wasn't audible, but it said, sing, Johnny, sing. That's what I heard. And I really believe that that was God. And I believe that was God just putting his, his beginning to put his, the thumbprint of, of the things that he had promised me. I heard sing, Johnny, sing. And as my life progressed, you know, I did a little bit of music, but I fell into the trouble I had. And, and I learned that God wanted to use music to build the story, the love story between me and him and to, and to build what my future would be. So I get that confirmation about being a musician and I continue in my life and I start singing in church. When I first started to sing at church, I would sing like this. You know, I had my guitar in hand and this on a stand and I was just so nervous and I was just so, man, I literally sang like this. Did you start like that too or? No, you were a, you were a, a G from the beginning. You were a superstar. Most people I meet are, have to go through this situation that they're embarrassed. And it's difficult. It can be hard to sing in front of people. So anyways, I would sing like this. I couldn't look at anybody. I've been doing it for a while now, so I can pretty much stare you down. But, uh, but, but you know, that was, one, that was a part of the beginning of my journey. I, I was, you know, leading worship at a church. I, I was so broken and torn up, man. And, um, and little by little, God brought me through this process. And, you know, I, and I started, you know, leading with a band and leading in different churches. Pretty soon I was a worship leader. And I was, you know, I had moved from one church to the next. God was moving me and shifting me, man. Because I was just being obedient to him. I went through the process. I went through the difficulty. I, I denied myself, like, you know, like the word of God says, pick up your cross and follow me. And, um, and I remember... Uh, I remember, I, and I just, I just, I guess I just want to, you know, testify to how good God is, man. I, I was in this relationship with this girl, and uh, this was a girl from like a sorority or something at FIU, and she was like really into drinking and stuff like that. And I had this heaviness, you know, I, I was just kind of, you know, going out with her. We didn't, we weren't even very serious. It wasn't even very long, but I was leading worship, and I got off the stage, and some guy who was visiting the church came up to me, and he was like, you know, Johnny, I didn't think I was going to get to speak to you tonight. But as you were worshiping, I felt just from the Lord that, you're, you know, there's something in your life that you need to clean up. And he said, we're both men. I think we know what it is. And, uh, you know, and of course he was referring to this girl. I went about my way. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't break things off right away. About a week or two later, I was going in to record the first single I ever released, first song I ever released. And my voice was shot. I couldn't sing man it's you know when god gives us a certain direction to go and we don't go that way he has a way of you know of of pushing us where we need to be because of his love for us and he was speaking to me that in that moment you know he had given me something to do and i went the other way that night i i sent that girl a text and and i and i broke things off and um and i was able to continue i was able to continue in the path that i was on and i and i guess the message for me sharing that little tidbit of my life is that whenever God has given us something to do, if we go the other route, we're never going to progress. We're never going to be able to continue forward until we, we get back to what Jesus, what God has called us to do. And if God hasn't called you to do something, either it's that you haven't been listening or you just haven't really asked and, in, and intentionally heard from him. So in that moment, he had given me that word. I went, you know, did my own thing. I had a little detour. And when I, when I obeyed, I came right back. I didn't get to, I didn't, I didn't detour up here and start up here. No, you start right back. So the best thing we can do as believers, the best thing we can do as, as, uh, as people living in sobriety, man, is just live in obedience. You know, know exactly what we need to do. Stay in our lane. Stay away from the people that we shouldn't be around. Don't go to the places that you shouldn't be in. So I was, con I, I just continue on my journey and, um, and, uh, I was leading worship one night and, and there was this very cool prophetic preacher that night at the church and he gave me this word at, at, after the service and he said, man, I, I see you just ministering to, uh, to celebrities and I see you ministering through YouTube and he gave me these words that catapulted me and gave me this idea and I started this YouTube channel and I did that for some time and after a couple years of doing that, just doing covers and you know, the friends that I had around me, we'd, we'd go and we'd go to an abandoned train and we'd just shoot a cool video. And I would edit it and this, that, and the other, and I would throw it up. I get this email out of the blue, and it's from this little show uh, from NBC called The Voice. I didn't even go looking for it, man. And I get this email, and it's offering me a, uh, an audition, an executive private audition to try out for the show. 
So actually, it's funny you're here today, Henry, because Henry went with me to California as my first trip to LA. Since, since then and that journey, I've probably been there at least 10 times, you know, in God's grace and everything he's done in my music. But, you know, we took that trip, Henry. We went, we went together and I did my audition and, uh, and God allowed me to be on the show. And in me being on the show, I got to talk a little bit about my, my testimony, George, and, and you know, what it's, what it's like to, to, you know, be in an addiction, but find God and, and have a relationship with God and your creator and how that truly fulfills you, how everything else in this world, it looks so attractive, but man, it's a dead end. It's a dead end until we know Jesus. And uh, that was an amazing door that, that God brought me through. And I didn't, I didn't make it as far as I wanted to, you know, I thought that I would go farther. had written here God has a plan for us sometimes and sometimes that means going through things that we don't want to but the good news is he has purpose in everything and I know that I wanted to catapult to the, to the top of my career I wanted to catapult to being this superstar artist but but God wanted me to go through a process God wanted me to, to build character just like diamonds are forged in flame right we all have to go through a process and we all have to to character has to be built in us we don't do it ourselves so I was on that journey, and ever since then, I've been able to write songs, and I've been able to kind of do things the right way. I don't know if you've seen artists who, who, who make it to the top too quickly, but it doesn't usually end up very well for them, right? Or people who get this crazy paycheck, they don't know how to handle it. So I think it's a blessing to be where we are and just recognize that God's handiwork is in everything that we're doing. Bless you. Bless you. Don't worry about it. God's handiwork is in everything is in every part of our lives as long as we're committed to him as long as we know him are we all believers here pretty much yeah just about so man it's such a blessing to be a child of god his word says that his plans are to prosper us not to harm us to give us hope and a future that's a promise we have from jesus that's a promise we have that when we when we recognize him as our savior that everything will work out for our good that means no matter what gets thrown at us that means if we don't make it on the voice or we make it to round two on the voice whatever it is God is working out a, a better plan that is perfect that is his perfect will there, there's such peace to find in that so as I sing that I'm always reminded of that please don't fail me your plans must be beautiful there's something beautiful I want to take a moment to sing another little bit of a song. The song is called Do It Again. This is not my song. And I want to sing this song because, I, I, you know, I, I'm so grateful for, for God's work in my life. And I think a lot of you are too. But he wants he wants to uh he wants to do he wants to do